Here at the offices at the Informer, we get a number of requests to do a series of interviews uh, around the country and around the world. And I've decided to go via Zoom to a beautiful part of the world. Some people call it God's country. Our guest is Daniel Fletcher, who basically is running the, the council in this part of the world. Where are we going? Where have you taken us, Daniel? Where are you? You know, George, we are based about 25 kilometres south of Darwin in the Litchfield municipality. We wrap right around Darwin, though, and all the way down to uh, the Manton Dam. So we've sort of encapsulated 3,000 square kilometres of God's country. <laughs> it's also crocodile country, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they're certainly our friends up this way. We can't avoid them, so we find some interesting ways to cohabitate. Uh, there's currently a, uh, a, a video that's gone viral uh, of, uh, of Tommy the Tank, the, uh, the four and a half metre uh, crocodile. He hasn't crossed your path, has he, in any of his travels? He hasn't, no. I think he might be over on the uh, eastern side um, of the country, but we've certainly seen it and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Brings back some good memories. Now tell me something. Uh, what's it, what, it, what is a good Melbourne boy doing in God's country other than running council? Oh, well, I, think, uh, I think I'd like to say uh, the weather is something that I avoid in, uh, in Melbourne now, but unfortunately it's probably uh, COVID that people are avoiding, staying away from, uh, from Melbourne. So look, the weather up here is uh, second to none. We, we don't really experience winter. And if you're here in the wet season, the storms are magical. You can't see them anywhere else than the way we get them up here. So yeah, it's a pretty pretty impressive part of the country. So what's people. required to run council up there, Daniel? Um, some thick skin, but besides <laughs> that, um, no, we, in the Northern Territory, we've got 17 councils um, at this stage. And I don't think that'll change anytime soon, but we've certainly got some challenges that other councils don't face with the remoteness of, of some of our communities and being able to deliver the same level and quality of services to what is the same amount of people just spread over a, a much bigger area. So, yeah, we could probably go on all day about what's required to do it here, but uh, I think the challenge is getting the right people in the right place at the right time for the community that we need. And, um, you know, our community here are very parochial about um, the rural lifestyle that, that they chose to, to live. So we, we have a really strong passion for making sure that we can uh, deliver a high quality of lifestyle for the, for the rural residents, but also being close to a major capital city where everything's at our fingertips. Now you've got a team of 60 plus who are part of that passionate crew that you talk about. You've been there about 12 months. How long did it take you to get indoctrinated? <laughs> well, there's, it's interesting. They told me when I first got here that you have to at least have lived here for 30 years or, <laughs> had, or had a child here. And uh, my wife and I did actually have our child uh, born here in December last year. So technically, uh, I, you know, I, I'm now part of the furniture. I was going to say you've achieved one of the critical protocols, which is putting you in an enlightened company. They must see you, uh, of course, now as part of the very special DNA that is the NT. Um, talk, to, talk to me about uh, some of the, the challenges has COVID impacted you guys uh, terribly? Uh, it, it did impact us uh, pretty heavy early on. Um, the Howard Springs Workers Village, which many might be aware of, is actually located in our municipality. So that's where the first group of repatriated Australians were housed. And that certainly elevated the level of, um, we could call it heightened anxiety about coronavirus and what was certainly happening towards the end of 2019 and the beginning of this year. Um, certainly, it, it was a challenging moment for our community to embrace that situation. The mining camp itself is located next to a school, next to a number of activity centres. Uh, so, you know, being, being able to provide some certainty to the community um, in partnership with the federal government and the Northern Territory government was a, a particular challenge for us at the time. We've, uh, I think, certainly moved on. That, you know, that was more than six months ago now. But uh, we've, we've been really fortunate, I believe, and the Northern Territory Government has done a fantastic job in responding to the, the crisis that uh, COVID is for our country. So um, certainly up here, we're, we're finding it, I believe, a little bit easier than some of the other parts of, of Australia. But right now, um, yeah, we're in, a, we're in a really good position. The Northern Territory Government have just had their election. So we're, they're looking to sort of 
reinvent themselves and re reinvigorate the economy. Um, from a council perspective, you know, we did have to make some serious adjustments quite quickly. We mm. didn't, uh, we couldn't go to the shelf and dust off the old COVID-19 pandemic plan because it just didn't exist. So in terms of being able to activate our business continuity planning and scenario planning to ensure that essential services um, such as the roads and, and waste management were maintained was um, quite an interesting challenge for us. We were certainly, um, uh, we, we were challenged quite heavily in the ability to adapt to the remote working environment. People are either working from home or, or not connected to our, uh, whether it's our administration centre or one of our libraries or another area that they were familiar working with. And connectivity was hot, probably the biggest challenge that um, we did face and we continue to face um, not being essentially a, a capital city or being well connected through the telecommunications realm. So yeah, there's some of the challenges that, that impacted us. Uh, talk to me about funding. Uh, if you had any challenges with, uh, you know, the sort of funding you need to keep the infrastructure going? Yeah, we were, um, I, I would say, relatively lucky. We have a somewhat healthy balance sheet. So to be able to um, look back and, and realise that the, the strength of the organisation and the way it's performed in the past has been able to support us now. And I think that's something that we, will can, we should be learning from um, at not only this moment, but into the future. Also, the again, I'll, I'll provide credit where it's due to the Northern Territory government. They've been really forthcoming, really responsive in that funding um, scenario for us, not only um, our council, but all the Northern Territory councils, um, and that they've provided um, certainly uh, the opportunity for rates relief uh, to the commercial businesses and uh, injected um, just under $600,000 for our municipality uh, to be able to ensure that um, service delivery and whether it was small small projects, were able to continue that uh, economic stimulation. How good's your grant writing? Uh, it can be really good, or it can be really challenging, depending on what the grant is. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, that that's probably everyone's uh, perennial challenge. Yeah, we um, we actually didn't need to, I guess, fight for the same bucket of money that other groups were. Um, again, the, the Northern Territory government were quite. Um, forthcoming in their proportionate funding to councils that needed it to get them through, um, you know, the immediate crisis itself. Do you believe that it's one of the great problems uh, going forward, uh, asset management, this sort of thing? Uh, it, it seems to me that if you're a really good writer, if you if you know how to hit all the right uh, uh, nerve endings, you're going to get the result whether it's worthy or not. Yeah, that's a really great question. And to answer it, I think that the ability to craft up a very intelligent or um, nuanced. A very resonating, uh, sorry? A nuanced. Yeah, very nuanced, very resonating um, uh, submission or application for a particular bucket of money um, has seen some issues in the past. It's, uh, it's some of those really clever uh, applications have got grant funding and to the expense of um, other areas or, or other um, asset management um, focuses that really should should have taken a priority. Um, I know that not only the Northern Territory government, but all governments, the go-to uh, approach whenever it's a, an economic challenge is to provide infrastructure funding uh, to stimulate the economy, to create jobs, to maintain a level of continuity. But I think one of the really important lenses that councils need to put on um, the opportunity to take money is uh, how is that going to impact the intergenerational equity of um, that particular asset? Are we just kicking the bucket down the road for mm. the next generation to have to fund the ongoing maintenance of these, uh, what are generally large infrastructure projects? Are they needed at the time? Um, you know, that's questionable, but um, the reality is most governments are using that as their source of support for the community. Um, really pumping money into the infrastructure where it's, it's potentially uh, could be realigned somewhere else. I hear you and uh, let's hope that the powers that be are listening at the appropriate times. We wish you a grand adventure in God's country. Uh, congratulations on the arrival of uh, a new one to the family. Is that your first? It is our first, well, yes. belated happy Father's Day to you, Daniel. Appreciate that, thank and you. All the very, very best. The season is changing. Christmas is getting ever closer. We wish you every success. 
Thanks, George. Ta All the best. Daniel Fletcher joining us from the NT.